Hello there, lovely frugal people. I hope you're all doing well. You might have noticed something a little bit different about me. What do you think? Keep it or start sticking a headband in and getting rid of it? I'm still not 100% yet. And I have noticed when it gets wet, it does tend to go quite frizzy. Anyway, less about that and more about this video. This video is a bit different. We're normally doing cooking or hints and tips. This video is about something that one of the viewers who watched our video about me when we did an all about me kind of getting to know me video spotted a load of my books on my shelf all my frugal books so I have brought out a selection of them and I thought we'd have a chat about how I became frugal what triggered it off and why do I love these books so much so the first thing that started me off was I was on the internet circa 90s probably 97 98 when i got my first computer that i could access the internet on and i found a website called the dollar stretcher and that's what triggered me off thinking oh okay i could be saving money on this i could be saving money on that what could i save money on you're gonna have to excuse me i'm getting poured by a little dog so forgive me come here little munchkin Ugh. Here's the Tinkerbell. I'm going to sit on a cushion next to me and hopefully not to interrupt too much. Anyway, the Dollar Stretcher was a really good website and I've had a look online and it's still going. We're talking nearly 30 years later, this website is still working. And I just became really interested in how people were saving money. I was, I think I'd just started working full time and so was you know, trying not to spend too much money. I was still living at home and I just wanted to think of ways that would help me out potentially for the future. Then one year we went on holiday. I think it was maybe a year later. We went to go and visit my sister who lives in America. And on the way back, I picked up this book. This is called The Millionaire Next Door. It is probably now coming up for 25 years old-ish. But it was just really interesting to hear about people who were American millionaires, but not your NBA stars or your footballers or people like that, your celebrities, just your average person with an average job who ended up being a millionaire. And the part that got me really interested was the frugal section. Frugal, frugal, frugal. And it talks about how they invited a load of people who were what they call a deca millionaire. So had at least $10 million in their bank or, you know, in resources and things and how they plied them with um, Cabernet Sauvignon this and all these kinds of things. And not a single one of them touched it. Instead, the next time they did it, they just brought in simple sandwiches, beers, sodas, and everybody was fine because millionaires of this caliber don't spend extravagantly on silly things like wines and such. However, if you are a person who is frugal, frugal is not just about spending nothing on anything, it's about spending money on, you on what you like. So if you cut back on the things that you're not that keen on to spend on your Cabernet Sauvignon in 1973, then that's totally up to you. But generally people don't. But I just found it a really interesting book. Anyway, next one, I started having a look on Amazon and I had some Amazon vouchers. So I started spending my Amazon vouchers on different books that I just piqued my interest. So I started off with this one, Cheap Talk with the Frugal Friends. Again, most of these books were American based books or possibly Canadian based books. Um, and this one was really good because again, it just gave me hints and tips for life. For example, cost per unit calculation. I hadn't even have thought of looking at price per 100 grams. I was just comparing the 75p packet of something to the £1.25p packet and thinking the 75p one was cheaper. Not thinking about how much I was getting per quantity to work out what was cheaper, and I do that all the time now. But have you noticed, if you go into supermarkets and they'll have price per unit underneath, they don't always have the same units. Some of them will do price per 100 grams, 
but the one you're trying to compare it with is doing price per kilogram. They do that on purpose. I am 100% convinced they do that on purpose to stop you from getting out your calculator and working it out yourself. You'll think, oh, I can't be bothered. Well, be bothered because it does make a massive difference. Now, while I was getting these books, I hadn't left home yet. I was still living at home with my parents, but it was things that I wanted to put in the memory banks for later to make sure that I had those ideas. Another idea that they had in this was using up bread heels or that last piece of bread, that bread crust. Now, I know when my daughter was younger, she wasn't a big fan of bread crusts, but I used to do this trick and it never mattered, which was I would turn the heel of the bread. So here's the, the outside crusty bit. And I would use that bit for my sandwich filling. So when she saw the sandwich, all she saw was the outer piece of bread and didn't realize that the heel of the bread, the crust was inside and it never really made a difference. Other things, trash to treasure. I loved this section because it was getting you to think about what is one man's trash might be another man's treasure. And I'm gonna show you an example. Here we go, here's my useful recycling, reusing. I found this in a skip. I did ask permission to take it, brought it home, took off these that were on this side. And this has been up for a good 15 years. And all as I did was get a piece of wood there, cut it at an angle, and just it just rests on there now, but it's perfectly secure. And I think that's a good little bit of recycling. The third main thing in this book that really stood out to me as I've kind of re-looked over them over the past day or so was a gift box. A gift box is such a great, great idea. It's just, I used to have a drawer in my cupboard where I would put anything I found that I thought might be a suitable gift for somebody in the future. It worked really, really well because when I sometimes, you know, an event was coming up or a birthday was coming up and I was like, oh, I haven't got anything. What can I do? What can I find? I would have a selection of things in my gift box. So if I'd found something that was on a really, really good offer, often after Christmas, when you get all those um, gift bags on offer, you know, a third off or nearly a third of the price, especially if you go to Boots, they're pretty decent there. Or if you go in B&M or places like that, you could get really good bargains. And so I would buy a few things and pop them in my gift box ready for those sudden birthdays. Oh my goodness, what have I got? What can I buy? I'd already got something there. This especially worked really well when my daughter was younger. Children's birthday parties, I swear we were going to at least one every three to four weeks and trying to get presents for different children. And I would buy books on really, really good offers and save those. And then if you look at sort of the time of year when crayons and felt tips and pads and paper and things like that were going on offer, I would buy a job lot of those and put them in that drawer and then I could package things together. She could pick out different things that she thought her friends would like and we would make a really cute gift bag. So that was the cheap talk one. Lots of good hints and tips. Yes, it's American, so some of the things don't apply to a UK audience, but it still got me in that frugal mindset. But for a UK audience, we love a bit of Martin Lewis. Moneysavingexpert.com is the website that he set up and he's done pretty well out of that. And he wrote this book. I think this book came out, oh, it must be at least 10 years ago, if not longer. Let me double check. I think it was 2006. So we're talking 18 years ago <laughs> that this came out. And this particularly fed into the good UK style things that we would do um, so this was a really good useful book so I like this one this is a particularly good thing a couple of years ago my friend started what we call black bag night simple idea group of people meets at someone's house everybody collects their unwanted clothes shoes whatever brings them and we all have a route and look through and see if there's anything that we want so we could share resources with each other. So that's a really good idea, especially if you've got a group of friends 
you know, I think a group of early 20s people would really benefit from maybe sharing those clothes with each other. Now, the other thing I think about as well is if somebody is passing something on to you, I have a lovely neighbour who passes some of her unwanted clothes on to me. Now, I never, ever reject them. I always say, yes, brilliant, I'll take them. And we make an agreement that anything that I don't want, I will then pass on to the charity shop, which I do. So that benefits me. It benefits her because she doesn't have to drag a whole bag of clothes down to the charity shop. And my wardrobe is looking pretty good with all the stuff that's in there. The next book that I bought, Mary Hunt. Mary Hunt taught me about sinking funds. Sinking funds. She didn't specifically mention that particular name, but that's what a lot of people are calling it nowadays is sinking funds. Is having a pot specifically for something. Not just let's have a bank account, let's throw all the savings in it and the savings are used for whatever, whenever. And suddenly you've got £5,000 in there and you decide you're going on holiday so you blow a load of it, but then your boiler breaks and you've got no money. So it's putting things in specific categories for, you know, so we're saving for a holiday. We're saving for a potential boiler mishap. I personally have loads of sinking funds for things that we're going to need in the future. I have one because I know we're going to need a sofa. My sofa is currently 20 years old. I think it's looking good. We did get it recovered, but these are great because these are washable covers. But I know eventually we're going to need a new sofa. We have a little pot for that. We're going to need a new mattress eventually. We've got a little pot for that. I'm saving up for my grandson. I have a little pot for that. I don't see him as often as I would like to. And I know if he was local, I would be the typical grandma, you know, come on, we'll go out and I'll buy him a toy or I'll buy him some treats or something like that, or I'll take him out somewhere. But because I don't get to do that, instead, the money that I would have spent on him, I'm now putting in a little pot for him for when he's a bit older. So that'll be a nice little bonus for him. So that's Mary Hunt. Now, Mary Hunt also has some really good stories in here of people who have contacted her about frugal issues that they have had. And they are really, really, really good stories to read and give you a sense of some of the situations people have been in. And if you're in a really bad situation, there is always hope that you can try and pull yourself out of it and there are resources available to you. So have a look out for that one. Now, my final book that I really, really adore, and I have done a whole video about this book, and I will put a link in the description box below, and I'll probably put something there or there near the end of the video, is the Tightwad Gazette. This is the culmination of Amy Decision's seven years of doing a newsletter, a monthly newsletter, all about being frugal, and it's everything she put in it. It's all her readers' letters and all sorts of hints and tips and ideas. Again, it's an American-based one, but you can take those frugal ideas and use them and adapt them to wherever you live. Because I know I get people here, mostly from the UK, some from the US and Canada, but I've even seen it as far as Australia, Switzerland, South Africa, I had someone contact me about my surveys through was coming from a long way away who wanted to prepare themselves for a move back up to the UK. So that was really, really good. So even if you are not a US person, this book is full of so many practical hints and tips. And yes, some of them are extreme. You know, she will reuse plastic bags from, you know, if you've put your veggies in the freezer, like I do, she reuses those plastic bags, she washes them out and uses them again. I do too. Some people think that's extreme, especially when they turn up at my house and see the dishwasher rack filled with plas empty plastic baggies that have been washed. Like, what is the point? Well, it's a penny saved, a penny here. And those pennies matter and those pennies add up. So that was my thinking. What is it they used to say? Take care of the pennies and the pounds take care of themselves. I definitely think that is true. Anyway, these are my four books that I have had a chat with you about. Four books? Five books. Five books that I've had a chat with you about. If you are interested, I bet you can find these on Amazon. So... 
have a look out. I will put in the description box below if I can find any links for you and see if those are any use. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments below, are there any frugal books that you absolutely love? And as I said, I will put a link to the video for this frugal gazette. Sorry, tightwad gazette. Just there. Uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.